Hi there, this is Jeff again. Uh, just wanted to share with you how I built my uh, bell siphon for my hyperponic garden. Um, just built it yesterday. Uh, experiment worked pretty well. And then uh, I've got two more that I need to build for two more small beds in my, in my garden. And uh, you can hear it in the background, it's working away. So let's... Uh, go through some of the parts and some of the pieces that go into the bell siphon and then we'll talk a little bit about what it's actually uh, capable of as far as being a way to automatically uh, vary the uh, water level depths in your different hyperponic beds. So here's the bell siphon in action. Uh, you can see the water level is pretty high. Uh, I'm going to fix that but for the sake of this demonstration it works out pretty well. So as the water level increases, uh, pressure actually builds uh, within the cap of the bell siphon and then once it hits a certain tipping point uh, you will see that water level drop all the way down until it reaches the bottom of the actual siphon and air is, air is introduced. Uh, so just to kind of talk about it briefly, um, basically what we're looking at is a PVC pipe with a PVC cap uh, and then a nylon elbow um, that is attached to a small piece of straw. Uh, inside you have a smaller PVC pipe that leads to your drain and a, a structure which <clears throat> I'm going to work on today as far as uh, trying experiment a little bit but basically you need a structure to allow the water in keep the rocks out and when everything's working uh, the water will rise to the point where it lifts the bell housing at the top and when that raises um, the pressure builds and it builds a siphon which actually draws the water down the pipe uh, at a very fast rate and that drains the bed and drains the bed fairly quickly. Uh, large systems use this. What I built here is a very small version of it and might be helpful to a lot of you with smaller beds. Now let's look at some of the parts and pieces that I used in my bell siphon. Uh, these are all the parts and pieces that I'm going to need for the next two uh, bell siphons that I'm going to make. But just to kind of give you an idea um, this little white cup, the part that I'm going to experiment with today, actually came from the bottom of this Armor All Original Protectant Wipes. Now granted, uh, yes, I know that that's toxic to plants, and what you need to do is make sure you clean it very well before you use uh, any products that are not, uh, that hold any other type of chemicals or anything like that. Uh, but I basically took the bottom part of that, cut, drilled some holes in it so the water comes through. Um, that gave me the uh, basis, or the basic portions of my uh, bell siphon. Now the siphon itself has a cap, and I bought basically from Home Depot just some... Um, these are actually the uh, one and a half inch pipe caps. PVC pipe caps. I also have two pieces uh, four and a half inches long of um, one and a half inch pipe. Um, I've already pre-drilled the hole but basically the, there needs to be a hole drilled. Uh, it's helpful if you have a uh, drill press to uh, kind of hold that. And then these are the two uh, uh, quarter inch nylon uh, hose barbs, elbows, that go into the top of that. And then I have a piece of quarter inch tubing that I can cut to length. Um, this is actually what I was looking at as far as trying to uh, experiment a little bit. I don't know if I need something solid for the uh, siphon to actually work, especially solid at the bottom, so the vacuum actually pulls it, um, pulls harder. So I'm going to try with these little uh, two use these little wire cups that I made um, just by basically bending a piece of uh, a larger piece of uh, wire I basically wrapped it around my armor uh, 
cup that I used beforehand and then just folded the bottoms underneath um, like so so that it actually comes through the uh, internal pieces are made of three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe uh, you'll need an elbow um, a lot of people like to just drain it straight through the bottom which that will work in my uh, smaller bed here I did not have that luxury uh, so I'm actually draining it out the bottom side uh, of the pot and then uh, just some large longer pieces and these actually extend along the bottom of the pot out the side uh, to the actual uh, drain itself now I wanted to show you these um, about ten dollars uh, purchased them from Home Depot you know nobody would um, you know, want to go out and spend ten dollars on a pair of scissors, but I can tell you right now, these slice through the uh, the PVC pipe uh, like butter, and well worth the uh, cost. So, just a uh, small set of PVC pipe cutters, and then uh, my right angle. I uh, generally use this just to make sure that I get all my. You know, you measure twice, cut once. Uh, kind of saves you some some time down the line. Um, probably the last items that I didn't show here are a couple twist ties. Those are just going to uh, tie uh, my pipe uh, to the side of the side of the siphon when it's all built. Uh, last thing, the actual pots themselves. And each of the pots I've actually marked um, at the bottom corner where I'm going to put the pipe through. Uh, just a uh, using one of the uh, three-quarter inch pipes um, but I will use a one inch um, hole cutting drill bit to go through that it makes a pretty tight seal uh, once you've got it through and got it set uh, just using a little bit of silicone sealant to uh, to uh, keep you know keep leaks away um, works pretty well uh, I'm not um, not talking you know negatively about the uh, uniseals that I see a lot of people using uh, just did not have time to, to wait on uh, an order from Amazon when I wanted to build this today uh, future I'll probably uh, gravitate towards the uniseals as a way to prevent leaks when uh, running PVC through my pots so that's my parts list and uh, next we'll get to putting it together thanks Okay, so since the last time I have done a little bit, um, basically I wanted to show you I attached the nylon uh, elbows to the cap. Um, you can kind of see where it comes through, but basically I uh, just use a little epoxy uh, glue, but this is something I had to dry, so I wanted to do it not on camera just to kind of give it time to time to set up uh, I did both for both uh, of the bell siphons that I'm building and then now we're going to go ahead and drill out the hole in the pot uh, and start assembling um, something to kind of pay attention to I'm using a one inch bit um, but if you can tell it has the little shoulders on it um, the little points at the end uh, that'll give you a much cleaner hole um, makes it a lot easier uh, when you uh, go to uh, try and cut these out. So let's go ahead and cut those out. Alright, so it's very difficult to uh, hold the camera and uh, drill at the same time. But you can see that our hole is, our one inch hole is just slightly smaller uh, than what we, uh, what we want. Um, the outline was made by the three quarter inch pipe. Uh, but that's all right because when uh, this plastic is pliable and it takes a little effort to push it through but once you push it through it is uh, there is a nice tight seal uh, so that any of the silicone that we use to to help um, kind of force that seal uh, doesn't have to really do a whole lot so the portion of the drain itself is made up of a longer tube uh, a shorter tube that's actually going to be the height uh, of the water and an elbow uh, to put those through. Like I said, my 
My uh, bell siphon is actually going to drain to the side. Um, well, most bell siphons will drain straight down the bottom and they want a, about a 12 inch uh, drop. Um, I am not able to do that under the conditions that uh, my um, bed is uh, placed. So I've uh, already run one out the side and it appears to work. So running uh, the others out the side makes more sense to me. Uh, that way I don't have to do a whole lot of uh, construction. I don't have to drill a hole in the bottom of the bottom of the pot. So, uh, as far as the height, uh, I messed around with several. Uh, this could be longer or shorter. Uh, obviously, as this gets longer, the tube that sits over the top of it needs to be taller. Um, but uh, basically, this is the water will drain into here, uh, regardless of. The siphon effect and then once the siphon effect takes place uh, it will bring the water level down to the base of the siphon itself so it that's also the difference in your water levels uh, from time to time so okay now you can see uh, once the elbow and the joints have been or the uh, actual riser has been put in place and the drain tube, uh, you can see the drain tube coming out of the side of the pot. Um, it took, I almost had to stand on it to get it in there. Uh, that's how tight that seal is going to be. But it, you can see it's kind of bowing the plastic a little bit. Uh, that's the effects of that hole being slightly smaller. Um, but that's alright because we want it nice and tight. We don't want any leaks anyway. And uh, we put a little uh, silicone around that and it's it'll be good for a long time so um, that's the main riser and like I said water will come up and then it'll flow in here with the bell siphon over the top it creates a si siphon effect which will actually bring that water back water level back down to the base of the siphon so let's put the siphon portion together and these are all just press fit right now um, there's a lot of controversy on whether or not you should glue them or not. Honestly, uh, press fit works uh, in most cases, especially in low pressure systems like this. Uh, but on, in the case of my bell siphon that I did earlier, I did go ahead and glue it together um, using you know, your standard uh, OD uh, PVC cement and purple primers. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there is nothing organic in this uh in these two uh mixtures i'm sure uh, but i'm also sure it's been used on every pipe in every every house um since forever that doesn't mean that it's epa certified or or, or even good for you but uh it'll hold it together and in a situation like the bell siphon where you do have some pressure being uh, put on the pipe it might be a good idea to go ahead and, and cement it up. Uh, especially if you press you press them together and they just don't want to stay pressed together. So that's just my thoughts on it. Okay, so this is where my experimentation comes in a little bit this time around. Uh, the last time I ran around, I used a plastic cup that I found basically as the base of an Armorall uh, uh, protectant bottle. Uh, just cut it off drilled holes in it so that the rocks wouldn't get through and use that um, cut a big hole in the center and put the put it down over the top now I'm I manufactured these little uh, wire baskets um, it's not that difficult to do just cut some wire and bend it a little bit and here and there and try not to cut yourself in the meantime because uh, these guys are sharp uh, but um, what I did notice about my first bell siphon that once you put the siphon down over the top, uh, it didn't really matter. Um, it basically just was floating around, but when it caught suction, um, you know, it stuck down to the bottom or whatever base it could hold on to. And one of the other things about a bell siphon is you usually cut um, flow holes through here. Well, by having a wire basket, I'm thinking that if once it suctions down, as you can see through there, there's that wire mesh down there is going to allow for the flow to come through. So I don't necessarily need to, it takes out a step where I don't have to drill. 
um, and should make this uh, relatively easy to assemble. So I take the one and a half inch tube, put the one and a half inch cap that I pre-drilled with the uh, and epoxy a uh, um, a nylon elbow into it. Press fit those together. Um, just did that one-handed. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good that way. And then uh, basically I pre-cut this little uh, siphon tube. What the siphon tube does is it, it basically tells it when to stop. Um, but you basically push that on. Uh, it won't go all the way to the bottom. It'll go close to the bottom. And then I've got a twist tie, or a, uh, I got a little tie, um, plastic tie that I can use to uh, just tie it to the body so it doesn't, you know, doesn't move around a lot. And I should be done. And at that point, uh, I'll hook up the drain, and let's fill it up with water and see if it works. So I will do these next steps. And I'll see you at the, uh, at the flower bed. Thanks. Okay, here we are. So now uh, we're back. And I wanted to show you that the uh, bell siphon that I just built, or just uh, made through this video, does in fact work. Um, so after the final steps, this is the uh, uh, completed uh, bell itself. Um, basically what the physics of it is as water comes up, uh, it starts to flow into the, into the hole. With this sitting over the top, this tube is already underwater, uh, totally sealing off the bell. And what happens is as the water falls in, it creates a vacuum uh, in the remaining portion of the bell. That vacuum drives water, uh, more water up and more water in. Uh, it will recede the water all the way down until this tube comes open, allowing air to come in and release the vacuum. So, let's watch it in action. Shall we? Uh, just uh, turn on the water. And we'll try to get it at a good angle so we can kind of see it. Fine. And maybe get it another angle so we can actually see when it starts to flow. And all of a sudden we get a small trickle, but then the vacuum kicks in. I'm going to let the water get to that middle level right there, and just right above that middle level. Okay, so now we've got water level up to that level. I'll take the water out, and we'll watch it as it drains down. Until that little tube comes open. And you can see it's dropped uh, about three inches. Still on a full flow. Even though it is below the water line. And then once it reaches, there you go. You can hear the little section. And there it took me all the way down to the point where I can even see the the middle of the uh, plastic under, underneath. So it basically took my water level down almost four, four and a half to five inches. Pull it back up real quick. Water uh, drainage stop. And as soon as it gets back up to that middle line, stop. Uh, vacuum is already started. Enough in there to fill up the whole thing. And, and it drains it probably in about 30, looks like 30 to 40 seconds. Not bad. All the parts and pieces to this. Um, I would say are below about six dollars total. Uh, I tend to buy uh, things in a little bit larger stock, so it's kind of hard to uh, 
to discern what's uh, what the actual you know, individual cost is, like the wire itself. I probably spent six bucks on the on the on a big roll of wire uh, or wire roll, but uh, there's the bell soft siphon. There's one in the bed, and I'm introducing you to the uh, probably the two most expensive cherry tomato plants in all of history. Uh, considering the fact that they are going to be uh, in this bed before too long. Picked them up today. So, thank you.